by the time the year round about uh, let's see 1990s 1980s to 90s yeah 1990, uh, we had a uh, 91 should I say uh, the International Year of Disabled People and there was a telethon here in New Zealand and that raised a lot of money it also raised a lot of awareness around disability and organizations such as DPA or Disabled People's Organization um, started to open up. So therefore, more knowledge, people were becoming more aware of disabled people. We weren't looked down upon, we weren't looked as uh, those people. We were starting to be integrated back into society. And just a little aside, and um, back in those early days, um, one of the words that was bandied around was um, handicapped. So the word disability, disabled person was not quite in. Back then it was handicapped people or cripples or whatever. Um, so handicap really we came from the days of, let's say, Charles Dickens era, era when uh, disabled people used to beg on the street to get money. And as they did this, they used to hold their cap out in their hand. People walking by would put money in them. So it was cap in hand, handicap. Just a little aside. 2001. Um, 2001 became a, a, bit a watershed year for disabled people in New Zealand. Um, society was not ready to totally accommodate our needs, but... Uh, it was getting better. But with government support uh, back in 2001, we started to develop the, um, the, yeah, the New Zealand Disability Strategy. And I was lucky to be part of that, as, as were a number of people in, the, in New Zealand. <clears throat> and this strategy came up with 18 key points, objectives to ensure the rights of disabled people, especially within government departments and services providing, uh, organisations providing services for disabled people under government funding. At about the same time, we were starting to see those big institutions that were established earlier on were starting to be closed. And this became a worldwide trend. This happened in Europe, it happened all over the world. Um, and New Zealand led the process and they called it deinstitutionalization. <clears throat> Life Unlimited was involved in one of these processes. Um, there was a large institution in Levin called Kimberley and uh, Life Unlimited had a contract to work alongside the Ministry of Health to help um, dismantle that institution, help then place people from that institution into the community, into meaningful um, meaningful housing close to their parents. And um, I can remember spending a lot of time in my early days with Life Unlimited, down in Levin, um, working out of there, helping to close down uh, Kimberley. All of those big institutions have gone now. You had things like King Seat, you had, um, yeah, Parirua, and you had a lot of other large institutions, all gone, Lake Ellis on the South Island. Yeah. So by the year 2007, 2008, new structures were starting to develop. And you'll see all of the more detail of this in your book. But, um, yeah, people were starting to become more included in society. And we were looking towards um, total integration, uh, taking our rightful place within um, the community. So now, um, people with disabilities take full part in societies. So we've come from a position of where hidden away, not wanting to be uh, seen to now being into the community, fully integrated. Having said that, there's still a long way to go. 
a long, long way to go. But it is a really good start, and we're heading down a pathway that is amazing. So, uh, yeah. So that is all I really want to talk about in this particular module, and that gives you a sort of a background of the uh, timeline and the history of the disability movement uh, in New Zealand, and it is mirrored right across the world.